Order! Order, I say! I thank you all for gathering here on such short notice. This day we must speak of grave affairs and their implications for the future of Charlian. Nay, of this very star. Said affairs concern all citizens, and so we have called for a public assembly. You may have heard rumors of the Talophoroi and the havoc these madmen wreak abroad. Under normal circumstances, we would pay little heed to petty disturbances outside our borders. The final days, however, are another matter altogether. For we dare not ignore these prophetic words of Eld. The end bearers will come, ushering chaos and calamity. The final days descend and devour the very star. I've never heard this prophecy. Is it true? Will all that really happen? Calm yourselves. The time has come to speak of the Forum's most sacred duties. But first... Give voice to the voiceless. Let bindings be unbound. By unanimous decree, I declare the enchantment broken. Master Leveilleur. If you would. Very well. Two hundred and seventy years ago, our forebears began an expedition in the Dravanian hinterlands, in search of a route to access the Ethereal Sea. This much is public knowledge. Their findings, however, would become the Forum's most closely guarded secret. What those researchers discovered in the Hinterlands was not a passage unto the Ethereal Sea, but the very heart of our star, and Hydaelyn herself. She spoke to them of a calamity that would extinguish all life and of a means by which we might be spared. The moon. Tis in truth a gargantuan vessel built to serve as sanctuary for her children and deliver them from this doom. Much like Nuncref's hope in ages past, it will bear the people of a world in the throes of death to a new home. Needless to say, this will be no small undertaking. To facilitate the great work, the Forum has maintained close contact with the servants of Hydaelyn, who presently reside on the moon. Convinced that the foretold end was all but inevitable, we began amassing a wealth of knowledge, not merely for the betterment of our nation, but in preparation for the journey to come. You reveal this to us now? By the gods, how long do we have? While we cannot say with certainty, we believe the hour to be nigh. We received a transmission from the moon suggesting as much not long ago. Which is why we must in earnest begin preparations for the great exodus. For his impressive contributions, and the leadership he demonstrated during our withdrawal from Dravania, 
We have elected Master Leveilleur to oversee this initiative. Fellow scribes and scholars, my countrymen, we face a threat of unprecedented scale. We must challenge the trials before us with composure and conviction if we are to find salvation. The wisdom of Charlian has ever been a shining beacon in the darkness, and so it shall continue to be. It is our solemn charge to see our heritage preserved for future generations. For those who will come after, we will brave a new frontier. Administrative edicts will be relayed to all major institutions ere long. In the meantime, carry on with your duties. With that, I hereby call this assembly to a close. remember what mother told us when we visited home that it wasn't until after we were born that father seemed to lose himself in his work if that great work of his was the evacuation of this star then yes it wasn't for his benefit Would you mind waiting here a moment? I wish to speak with Father before we leave. Thank you. I shan't be long. If it's all the same to you, I have a few choice words to share with Father as well. So, come to call us cowards and bid us join your fruitless battle against the inevitable. Nay, we do not object to the Forum's proposal. On the contrary, those who wish to flee have every right to do so. Orianger is cooperating with your associates on the moon to ensure that all is ready should evacuation be our only recourse. Then whatever your business, I suggest you be brief. Though we cannot boast the boundless wisdom of Charlian, we have first-hand knowledge of foreign cultures and have conversed with no small number of peoples. These experiences have taught us fundamental truths that cannot be recorded in any tome nor charted on any map. The beating heart of this planet is its people many of whom would give anything, even their lives, to protect the lands they love. Many may choose to join you in the end. But what of those unwilling or unable, for whom escape will never be an option? What would you have them do? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, Father. It is indolence. This is why we choose to fight. We'll not ask for your understanding, Father. Only that you don't turn a blind eye to the good we have done. That we can still do. We're not children in need of protection. Hold fast to your principles and let the world burn if it please. But we believe there is still another way. And if there is, we will find it. You see if we don't. Do as you will. Just 
Stay out of our way. Were he not so consumed with self-righteousness, he might tell you how proud he is of you both. Bold words call for bold action, and there'll be no turning to your father should plans go awry. As if I ever would. So long as there are those who wish to stay and fight for this star, we have to do what we can to help them. And if we're to do that, we'll need to be well rested. Wouldn't you agree? And having triumphed over what we once thought to be the source of all evil, I can think of no one in greater need of at least a dozen winks. Shall we then? To the Annex. To prepare for tomorrow. Oh, apologies. I, um, I, I didn't mean to... <clears throat> if you could spare a moment before bed. Thank you. I fear this may be the last quiet night we have to talk for quite some time. I am troubled of late. Unwarranted concerns, perhaps, I hope. Nevertheless, I feel compelled to share them with you. Though you have bested your enemies thus far, Xenos and even Zodiac, your victories have come at a considerable cost to yourself. No one is without their limits, and you are no exception. I worry the added weight of the final days will prove more than you can bear. It is surely too much for any one man. But you needn't bear it alone. 
Let me share your burden. My, uh, carrying capacity pales in comparison to yours, but I could still help. Shoulder the occasional satchel from your ever-growing mountain of, um, baggage. You have already done so much to help relieve me of mine own encumbrances. It is only fair that I repay you in kind. Of course, it needn't be only troubles we share. Moments of joy may seem few and far between now, but there will come a time when we look back fondly on this journey. The inquiry at the Forum, our march through the snows of Garlemald, our impromptu dinner in this very room, all of it. And that is to say nothing of the journeys yet to come, to the ends of the world and beyond. Uh, but tomorrow will be no less busy than today, and I've kept you from your rest long enough. Sleep well, my friend. Ah, I hope I didn't wake you. I pray you will forgive the unannounced visit, but I wish to speak with you before retiring for the night. About Garlemald, and the time we spent with the people of Tertium. Dangerous though it was, I'm glad we had the opportunity to treat with Eulis and Quintus. I was worried what might happen after we were collared. If they attempted to restrain you too. If they succeeded. Once more, I put you in harm's way. And for that, I must apologize. Or rather, I should thank you for trusting in me time and time again. After all our journeys together, I dare say I've used every expression imaginable to convey to you my gratitude. Nevertheless, I hope these words of mine still carry some small weight. Tomorrow, our fight continues. Mayhap it would have been better to seek you out after we have true cause for celebration. But having mustered the courage to stand up to Father, and achieve a personal victory of sorts. I wanted to carry on in that spirit before my nerves got the better of me. The hour grows late, and you doubtless tire of my ramblings. I have a letter for Orenvold to finish, but we'll be off to bed shortly. Sleep well. Craving a midnight snack, were you? I did consider bringing a few sweets, but decided this wasn't an appropriate occasion. I couldn't sleep. Had a few things on my mind. I know it's late, so I'll try not to talk your ear off. It's Xenos. I keep thinking back to Garlemald when he'd taken control of your body. And altogether terrifying experience, to say the least, and one that served as a harsh reminder. No one 
no matter how strong or quick or clever, is invincible. Not even you. And as much as it might seem at times that you are, one misstep, one mistake, and that's that. Which is why, even though I know you've heard it a thousand times before, I'm going to tell you to take better care of yourself. Because you really, really should. It goes without saying that we're all committed to this fight. But that doesn't mean that we need to throw our lives away. You know how I feel about noble sacrifices. Right, that's settled. We'll be keeping the acts of gratuitous bravado to a minimum. When I looked father in the eye and swore we'd find a way to avert this tragedy, it wasn't a promise just for him. It was a promise for you, too. Evening. I hoped you hadn't crawled beneath the covers just yet. If you'll indulge me for a moment, I have a favour to ask. Don't worry. Nothing desperate or dire, if that's what you were wondering. Not yet. You know we may have quite literally entered our final days. The ancients went so far as to call it that for a reason. If so, then everything we did for Reen, for the first, will have been meaningless. And I can't accept that. I just can't. My mind won't allow for the possibility. And that could be a problem. When we're in the thick of it, I don't know if I've got it in me to be pragmatic this time. To run, even if running's the right choice. The only choice. So if you see me turning a blind eye to the harsh reality, beat some sense into me, would you? I trust you and the other Scions with my life. And I'd like to think the feeling is at least occasionally mutual. And I'd never forgive myself if my stubbornness put them in danger. Gods, listen to me. Beginning to sound like the father I never had. So, can I count on you to keep me in line? I can think of no one else more eminently qualified. Excellent. Now I can breathe a bit easier. Which isn't to say that I will, given what we're up against. Let's keep this little chat our secret. I'd rather not have anyone scolding us for burning the midnight oil. You're still awake. Good. Might I trouble you to stand still for a moment? Hmm. Nothing appears out of the ordinary. A precautionary measure. You will recall that serving as a vessel for abundant light in the first very nearly ended poorly. In your recent battle on the moon, you were almost certainly exposed to similar, if not greater, forces. Fortunately, 
From what I can see, you and your ether are none the worse for wear. Would that Reen were here to confirm my assessment. To think you actually found yourself in a direct confrontation with Zodiac. As if Xenos gallivanting about in your body was not misfortune enough. Did you so grossly offend every single deity in a past life that they saw fit to place a curse upon your soul? Forgive me. That was in poor taste. I recall vividly how battered and broken it was in the depths of Amarant. Would that you could have seen it with your own eyes. Mayhap then you would understand why the greater part of me is glad you did not. It was... a horror beyond description. Promise me you will be careful. That you will seek my counsel if you feel unwell. That puts my heart at ease, if only a touch. I suspect it will grow colder as the night wears on, so do be sure to stay warm. Sleep well, and may the shadows keep you. You're alone. Good. The twins thought now would be a wonderful time to pay a visit to my chambers. Rather than listen to them bicker over tonight's snacks and tomorrow's plans, I seized the first opportunity to make my escape. To their credit, they decided against intruding on your peace and quiet. be a bit exhausting at times, can't it? I wasn't sure what to make of you at first. During the Dragonsong War, how quick you were to take up a cause not your own. But I came to see that is simply the way of you and yours. I will not pretend to understand this talk of ancient primals and the final days, but I trust in your judgment and choose to believe in your cause. You and Alphano have my lance, now and always. You'll need it. Rack and ruin looming on the horizon, calamity bearing down upon us. There's no place I'd rather be than here, standing shoulder to shoulder with friends on the front line. So do not hesitate to send me against your enemies. I'll make them rue the day they met me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I could do with a little air. If Alphano asks, I was never here. Until the morrow. Thank the gods that tower is gone. The sight of it was enough to make me sick. Thank the Ilsebar contingent, more like. Word is, they fought their way into Garlemald and toppled the bloody thing themselves. Not just the one, neither. All the towers have up and vanished. Aye, I, I heard the same. 
Commander Aldin and his troops help keep casualties to a minimum, too. But is it true they brought back tempered Galleon soldiers? As Commander Aldin tells it, they've a treatment for that now. But don't you worry. Cured or not, they've no plans to bring them into the city proper. I see. Well, that's a relief then. I know we've brothers and sisters among the lot, but I can't say I'm eager to welcome them home. Wanted to think about it for a while yet. We're to be looked after in Alagana for the time being. Another day, another commission of paramount importance. Well, what have we here? Hmm. Hey, are you all right? No. The shadows play tricks. Nothing more. The towers are gone. And the Garlean threat is abated. And yet... Why does it feel as though it's about to get much... much worse?
and lo, vile beasts did rise. Leaving naught in their wake but blood and ash. Sun scorches earth and boils seas. And our sins ascend unto the heavens. Three dooms to unmake all we were. Burns. The final days are truly upon us. My friends, I trust you have heard the news. We have. What can you tell us of the situation, Your Excellency? Last night, the isle was rocked by tremors, and the earth itself cried out. Aloft, the heavens began to burn. From all about, unholy beasts, the likes of which we had never seen, came forth in fury and rage. No. To say they came forth would be... inexact. The people of Radzat Han themselves transformed into these baleful fiends. Though the phenomenon was observed throughout our lands, the first creature, the largest and most dreadful of the lot, wrought havoc upon us here in our fair city. Though they bear superficial resemblance to divinities of legend, they are ungodly abominations. The people decry them as blasphemies. The large one's rampage has since taken it to the northern reaches of the island. I mean to dispatch our radiant host in an attempt to quell the threat. And what of Vitra? Vitra too makes for the north of his own accord, and yet... He knows the blasphemy and its minions were but yesterday his beloved people. I pray his boundless compassion and mercy does not deter him from taking unenviable but necessary action. Understood. I ask that you allow us to aid you in quelling this threat. You would risk your lives to help us yet again? I have no words to express my gratitude. Our regiments approach the north from several directions, with a number of units set to depart from the docks of Yedlinath. They will make landfall in an area of dense jungle but one can expect to encounter dangers even beyond the fell beasts we hunt. I leave you to your preparation. You will find me at the docks when you are ready to depart. prepared as we'll ever be. Let's go.
could be a pleasure as always. Right then. Let's give it our all.
You cannot stop us! You underestimate me!
presence I sense. The Horde draweth near, be on your guard.
This will hurt.
underestimate me! As I feared. What is it? The beast was there, and now it is no more. Yes? Indeed. We saw it plain. But you didn't, did you? I saw nothing. Not the blasphemy that perished here, nor the other men turned beasts. And because of this, I now see it all too well. There is no ether. Where the creatures should be, I saw naught but emptiness. Emptiness? But that would mean... Recall the words of the Watcher. It was a stagnancy of ether, a cessation of flow leading to decay and absence that led the ancients to conclude their star was dying. This is the same phenomenon. The instant these people are seized by the transformation, their ether begins to rot and crumble away like dried mud. Until, from their corporeal forms to their very souls, naught remains. The beast spoke with its dying breath. Surely, at least a sliver of the man it was endured. Mayhaps so. But even if the process was incomplete, it was little more than a faint residue. Gods be good. You're saying they cannot be saved? Not by any means known to me. Or by any means at all, like as not. For there is naught left to save. They return not even to the ethereal sea. The 
beasts rage on, their hunger insatiable. Even deprived of their master, they perpetuate his legacy of hate. Once proud sons and daughters of Thavnir, all of them, and now I spill their blood. Vitra, my friends, I am heartened to see you safe. You put your secret at risk. Those closest to me already know the truth. A truth I must now share with one and all. Vitra, calamity has come to Razatan. Our fair nation is rent by screams of pain and despair. More than ever, we require a strong leader to shepherd us through the storm. Reveal your true self to our people, Vitra, and guide us to salvation. What madness is this, I one? Thou dost forget thyself. Were we to reveal our duplicity, it would do naught but foster confusion and chaos. Nay, I shall remain the Satrap's loyal ally and do battle with the beasts. Easing hearts and leading the people to safety is thy task and thine alone. I ask that you remain at Ahewan's side and render unto him what aid you may. I know not what lies ahead, but without you, Ratetan will not survive. Take me with you. I am as at home fighting in the air as I am on land. Take me with you. Were my words unclear, I require no assistance. My place is at Ahewan's side. Estinia, here. It's the last thing you ever wanted, a Link Pearl. We'd gain much from knowing your elevated perspective. And it'll keep you from getting lonely, which I know you love. <laughs> you heard the man. Seems I'm coming with you after all. Then I pray thy grip is iron. Be it on thy head if thou dost chance to fall. Fair enough. Now, shall we? Fear it is as Vitra says, we will not survive this on our own, while I am loath to impose upon you again. I would insist if you did not. It is the very reason we have come. Then once more I find myself without words to thank you properly. Let us return to the capital and plan our next course of action.